Imagine you're sitting in a quiet room trying to relax after a long day. Suddenly, you hear a faint ringing. You look around, thinking it might be your phone or perhaps a distant alarm. But as you search, you realize the sound isn't coming from anywhere in the room, it's coming from inside your head. This mysterious ringing is a condition known as tinnitus. It affects millions of people worldwide. For some, it's a buzz, a hum, or even a roar. It can disrupt sleep, make it hard to concentrate, and even lead to anxiety and depression. In this essay, we'll explore what tinnitus is, what causes it, and most importantly, what you can do about it. Tinnitus, pronounced tinnitus or tinnitus, is the perception of sound when no external noise is present. It's often described as a ringing in the ears, but that's not the whole story. Tinnitus can manifest in many ways. Some people hear a buzzing, others a whooshing, and some even describe it as a clicking or hissing sound. It's important to understand that tinnitus isn't a condition in itself. It's a symptom of an underlying condition. Think of it like a fire alarm. The alarm isn't the problem. It's alerting you to a problem. Tinnitus can be subjective or objective. Subjective tinnitus, the most common type, is sound that only you can hear. Despite being so common, tinnitus is still not fully understood. Tinnitus can have many causes and often it's not just one factor but a combination. One of the most common causes is age-related hearing loss. As we get older the tiny hair cells in our inner ear that transmit sound to our brain can become damaged or die. This can lead to hearing loss and often tinnitus. Exposure to loud noise is another major culprit. Whether it's a one-time exposure to an extremely loud sound, like an explosion, or repeated exposure over time, like working in a noisy factory, loud noise can damage those delicate hair cells. Sometimes something as simple as earwax can cause tinnitus. Ear infections, both in the middle ear and the inner ear, can also lead to tinnitus. In some cases, tinnitus can be a side effect of certain medications, particularly aspirin, antibiotics, and some antidepressants. Cardiovascular problems, high blood pressure, and narrowed arteries can all contribute to tinnitus. While the primary symptom of tinnitus is the perception of sound without an external source, it's not the only way this condition can affect you. The phantom noise of tinnitus can vary widely from person to person. Some describe it as a high-pitched ringing, while others might hear a low roar. It can be constant or it might come and go. For some, it's a minor annoyance. For others, it can be debilitating. Many people with tinnitus report other symptoms as well. Headaches are common possibly due to the strain of constantly trying to hear past the tinnitus. Sleep problems are another frequent complaint. Tinnitus can also affect your ability to concentrate. Perhaps most significantly, tinnitus can have a profound impact on mental health. Section 5. Living with the constant buzz tinnitus in daily life. Living with tinnitus can be challenging. Imagine trying to have a conversation in a quiet restaurant, but there's a constant ringing in your ears. Or picture yourself trying to fall asleep, but the buzzing in your head won't let you drift off. These are everyday struggles for people with tinnitus. Work life can be particularly difficult for those with tinnitus. Concentrating on tasks becomes a real challenge when you're constantly battling an internal noise. Social situations can also become stressful. Noisy environments like restaurants or parties can exacerbate tinnitus symptoms. This often leads to social isolation as people with tinnitus start avoiding these situations. But it's not all doom and gloom. Many people with tinnitus learn to manage their symptoms and lead full, happy lives. Section 6. Turning down the volume coping strategies for tinnitus. While there's no cure for tinnitus, there are many ways to manage it and reduce its impact on your life. One of the most effective strategies is sound therapy. This involves using external noise to alter your perception of or reaction to tinnitus. Relaxation techniques can also be very helpful. Stress often makes tinnitus worse, so learning to manage stress can make a big difference. Techniques like deep breathing, meditation, and progressive muscle relaxation can all help. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, is another powerful tool for managing tinnitus. CBT helps you develop coping skills and change negative thought patterns. Lifestyle changes can also make a big difference. Section 7. Sound Therapy and More Treatment Options for Tinnitus When it comes to treating tinnitus, there's no one-size-fits-all solution. 
One popular treatment option is sound therapy, which we touched on earlier. This can involve simple white noise machines, ear-level sound generators, or even hearing aids with built-in sound generators. Tinnitus retraining therapy, or TRT, is a specific form of sound therapy that combines sound masking with educational counseling. For those whose tinnitus is related to hearing loss, hearing aids can be a game-changer. By amplifying external sounds, hearing aids can help mask the internal noise of tinnitus. In some cases, medications may be prescribed to help manage tinnitus. While there's no drug specifically for tinnitus, certain medications can help with related problems like anxiety or depression. Remember, what works is highly individual, so don't be discouraged if the first treatment you try isn't effective. Section 8. The Importance of Professional Help in Managing Tinnitus While there are many self-help strategies for managing tinnitus, seeking professional help is crucial. A healthcare provider can help determine the underlying cause of your tinnitus and rule out any serious conditions. They can also guide you towards the most appropriate treatment options for your specific situation. Your first stop should typically be your primary care physician. They can perform a basic evaluation and refer you to specialists if needed. An ear, nose and throat doctor or ENT can check for problems in your ears and auditory system. An audiologist is another important professional in tinnitus management. If your tinnitus is causing significant distress, a mental health professional can be invaluable. Remember, you're not alone in this journey, and with the right professional help, you can find ways to manage your tinnitus effectively. Section 9. Stress and Tinnitus – A Vicious Cycle Stress and tinnitus often go hand in hand, creating a vicious cycle that can be hard to break. Tinnitus can cause stress and stress can make tinnitus worse. When you're stressed, your body goes into fight-or-flight mode, increasing adrenaline production. This can make you more aware of your tinnitus and potentially increase its perceived volume. On the flip side, the constant presence of tinnitus can be a significant source of stress. It can disrupt your sleep, interfere with your work, and make social situations challenging. Breaking this cycle is crucial for managing tinnitus effectively. Stress management techniques can be incredibly helpful. Reducing stress won't necessarily make your tinnitus go away, but it can make it much more manageable and less bothersome in your daily life. Section 10. Tinnitus in Children – What Parents Need to Know While we often think of tinnitus as an adult problem, it can affect children too. In fact, studies suggest that up to 30% of children experience tinnitus at some point. However, children may not always recognize or report the symptoms, making it challenging for parents and healthcare providers to identify. Children might describe their tinnitus differently than adults. They might say they hear buzzing bees or whistling in their ears. Some children might become irritable or have trouble concentrating without understanding why. The causes of tinnitus in children are similar to those in adults. Exposure to loud noise is a common culprit, especially in this age of personal listening devices. With the right support, most children with tinnitus can learn to manage their symptoms effectively and live normal, happy lives. Section 11. Hope on the Horizon, Latest Research and Future Treatments While living with tinnitus can be challenging, there's reason to be hopeful. Researchers around the world are working hard to better understand tinnitus and develop new treatments. One exciting area of research is in neurostimulation techniques. These involve using electrical or magnetic stimulation to target the areas of the brain involved in tinnitus perception. Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation, or TMS, is one such technique that's shown promise in clinical trials. Another approach being studied is vagus nerve stimulation, which pairs electrical stimulation of the vagus nerve with sound therapy to try to retrain the brain. Genetic research is another exciting frontier. Scientists are working to identify genes that might make some people more susceptible to tinnitus. There's also ongoing research into drugs that might help with tinnitus. <laughs>